Uh, my name is Rosa and I've been seeing Milo for about three years now. I've been in hair for 10 years and I met a client, Tom, who recommended that I come see you. What I didn't expect was that we would go into something that I've been struggling. I've had, I was diagnosed with interstitial cystitis at 24. So chronic pain, inflammation in the bladder. And at 24, not being able to hold your, your pee is like embarrassing. So it was something that my grandmother actually had and one of my aunties also had. So obviously like a genetic predisposition, something that carry our pain and our lineage and we carry this trauma in our ancestry. So we started working on, you know, the shoulder and we started working on the upper body and the legs and we started there and we progressed into the abdominal, which I was so nervous at first because I was like, you're going to stand on me. But, um, <laughs> you know, but um, little by little over time, there were these emotional releases and all the trauma and all the things that I had been through in my life that I was carrying started to come out and you taught me that you know we the issues in the tissue right so it's something that we carry and when we don't feel things they end up in the body and so in that process layer by layer little by little we worked through it and you sat with me and you sat with that pain and it was like my capacity to tolerate pain and to be with my pain continued to grow because you know we're Americans so we're taught that like oh we don't feel pain you suppress it you take pills you drink you smoke whatever but this taught me to feel my pain and to be with it and that it passes and it's temporary mm -hmm. and <laughs> that it's not forever yeah. and I'm not gonna die yeah, yeah. and it's okay <laughs> and you learn to breathe through it and to be with it. And in that process, it was like little by little, the pain started to go away. And I would come here and you'd be like, you know, how many times do you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night? And I'd be like, none, like none. And it was crazy because before I would, you know, have to get up to pee like five, six, seven times. And it was just like, my body couldn't handle that. So, but you really sat with me in processing. I had some sexual trauma. I had some, you know, abuse stuff that I had to really work through. And it was like, I consider you to be a somatic practitioner because you're yes. sitting with people as they process emotions and the emotions that they feel as they release. And that has just been so powerful. And I'm just so thankful because a lot of prayers were answered to get here. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful for that. What about the homework that I... Oh yeah, <laughs> all the homework. <laughs> I have a stool, it's like a folding stool, yeah. and my it's a very hard, like five inch diameter ball. So I'll take my, I set out the stool, always in the morning, no food, mm -hmm. empty stomach, and I sit on the ball and I roll on the ball, and I find those places, those really hard points, and I just yeah. sit with them and I just roll yeah. there, and I feel my feelings, and sometimes I cry and it yeah. hurts, but it's so worth it to have that relationship with my body where I'm like, oh, this is what's going on, and now I know, because you taught me, this is how I can fix it. Okay, yes. cool. So, and then the other piece was, you know, the, the personal massage and taking the hands yeah. and working through here and allowing things to move. Yeah, it's just been, it's been really cool. It's hard. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> the homework is tough, but it's worth yeah. it. And then just being consistent, yeah. In the beginning, you really, really, I cannot, I cannot put my hands on your yeah. stomach, on your belly. Yeah. Like, really, really, uh, you have that intense... Yeah, you know, like you, you, oh god, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna curl up, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's layers, right? It starts mm -hmm. in layers. So you start very gently at the top layer, yes. and as you work through that, there's emotions and there's the fear of pain. It's like we're scared to be in any type of pain, as if it's not safe to feel, but it is safe to feel, and you provide that safe space to feel. Yeah. So you little by little you work with your hands and like you don't you know start with the hammer immediately or start I'm gonna stand on you today like I mean, you don't scare me like that yeah. like you you know you gently kind of walk us through walk me through the process of little by little okay we're gonna start here and then you talk about the layers too because you talk about there's like these thick layers on the top of fascia right, right? and then there's these bands that are really thick yeah. underneath and little by little you, you kind of peel at those layers and you can't you can't know what's underneath until you get through and yeah. at first you could barely touch me and I would scream and I would cry and it yes. was just like so emotional big reactions yeah. 
and then little by little you're like okay i'm gonna stand on you okay <laughs> so when i stand on you yeah. how that feels now compared when we started like oh my gosh like night and day i just scream at you like yeah. <laughs> just the pain was a 10 it was so intense and you feel like you're gonna die like your yeah. body's like <gasps> like yeah. this is so scary but it's not like that compared to now you stood on me and i was like okay there's a Nothing, person right? standing on me there's no pain it's like pressure <sighs> it's heavy <laughs> you're not that heavy but you yeah. know like yeah, yeah there's there's a person standing on me but i can breathe it's okay it's okay it's okay. okay a minute went by okay i guess we can do another minute maybe we'll see like i don't know what does mila have in store for me today yeah. <laughs> like we'll yeah. see it's my job i wore black red and gray yeah. for that barbershop and so most of my wardrobe was black yes and i remember you shared with me you were like you know culturally sometimes when we were black we absorb all the feelings of other people yeah and i was like oh my god <laughs> i don't want to do that so um that was something that all throughout being young i would always wear like neutral color gray and whites and blacks and i would never wear anything bright and so it was uncomfortable to start wearing colors it was like oh this is Everyone sees me now, like I'm <laughs> yellow and orange and the whole world is looking at me and I felt like all these eyes on it. It was just like attention I wasn't seeking, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was also like, I love orange now because this part of my body, yeah. the sacral chakra, right? Yeah. This orange energy center yeah. is way more open and way more relaxed and has a, I have a whole different, it's right, sexuality, creativity, yeah. it's a whole different energy. Yeah. So. <laughs> color has just been like this whole infusion so i think i sent you a picture of my closet the other day yeah. it was like a rainbow it was like all <laughs> colors honey like we are not playing around because i want to embody all of those components of those energy centers yeah. right so yeah. i just want to be authentic and not so like absorbing other people's stuff right shoot <laughs> i'll show up in like all green and like all yellow and people are like wow like you're you're here and i'm like yes i am i'm going to apologize for it like i don't know it's just it's just different energy now so i just i'm very thankful can you say to like hammer my chest and different so i'll have like the little thing and yeah. um my knees and all the places that you've pointed out to me like yeah. i'll do it myself because i'm like well I can't like expect me to do everything. I yes. need to take care of myself too. Yes. So yeah, I will hammer myself and have my mom will be, like hammering my shoulder and like yes, I don't care. I'll go for it because <laughs> it works. It's so we're gonna continue today okay. and uh, we're gonna show okay. to the world or the universe that yeah. what can abdominal massage can uh, help us to release the stress in life and the tensions that we accumulate. And we'll take it from there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. You have to shift the possibility of who you want to be, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm, you know, I'm a person with this condition. I have this or this condition, right? And it runs you. And so, like, when I say, like, I'm a healthy person, I'm a whole person, mm -hmm. I'm a person who's healed, right? Like, owning that as an yeah. identity. Like, it's hard for me to say, like, medicine person because that's, like, a big title, but, like, like I am a facilitator of healing. You're a facilitator of healing, right? Yes. Because healer is like a big title. Yes. But that identity shift, you know, that's what really changes. And it's like, you know, when I was young, I used to call, I was like, oh, I'm just a fat person. I'm just a fat girl. But yes. now it's like, I'm athletic. Yes. You know? Like, I'm a fit person, right? Yes. That's what I tell myself. Yes. And that's what becomes, right? So it's yes. the identity shift of like, oh, if you say like, oh, I'm never going to get better. Like, oh, I'm going to live with this for the rest of my life, right? Doctors always say that, like, oh, you're going to have this condition forever. Mm. But, like, if you believe that, that's the difference. So it's the identity. It's shifting your identity. And, like, working with someone like you who is, like, really shifting and moving energy and willing to do the work and willing to, like, sit with you. And that, that identity shift is, that's everything. Because, wow. like, yeah, I'm, I'm a person who's always moving in medicine. I'm always learning new things. Like, I'm not a sick person. I'm not a mentally ill person. I'm yeah. crazy sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm like, <laughs> but yeah, but like that—that's that's the big piece. Wow. I'm working on a book. I'm coming out of like a really crazy shift, and you've been a huge part of that. And I'm just very thankful to be here. That's why I, when when you first said like be on camera, I was like, no, like I'm not doing that. But then you were like, no, but for all the people that are struggling, for all the people like myself who are struggling with chronic pain, chronic pain is no joke. 
Yes. But if you identify as a sick person, you'll be a sick person forever. If you identify as somebody who's like willing to take the journey of like, okay, this is a process. I'm willing to take it on. I'm willing to heal myself. I can heal myself. Cool. Here we are. You did that <laughs> three years. Yeah. But people want it, in my experience, like one day, one session, two sessions, and then they it's give because up. because the American perspective yeah. is this, you know, take one pill and you'll feel better in the morning. And that's this very like... What's it called? Um, instant gratification, yes. right? They want this instant gratification. Oh, you better get better now. But we didn't get sick overnight. Yes. We didn't develop a condition in one day. Yes. So how are we going to get better in one day? The more you don't understand, your, you're not connected to your body, the more suffering you have. Mm -hmm. And the suffering keep building up until you, you're alive, but, but you, you're not alive. Right. You're alive, but you're dead inside. <laughs> you zombie. But it's, the, it's the responsibility, yeah. when they put the responsibility on you, it's because the culture here teaches that the responsibility is on the doctor. They're supposed to fix me. So I'm going to go to the doctor, they're supposed to, fix, supposed to fix me, right? So I'm going to go to this person, they're going to heal me. Yeah. And that's not the truth. Yes. The truth is that we are responsible for healing ourselves, yeah. and we're responsible for our body and for our trauma, for all the things that we've gone through and for working through that. So instead of placing that responsibility outside, it has to go within and say, I am going to learn. Yeah. I'm going to learn what Milo teaches me. I'm going to do all the homework. Those are the people that are willing to take responsibility as yeah. opposed to the Western way of, you know, going to the doctor and, okay, you fix me. You know, it's that, that perspective, but mm -hmm. it's not, that's not how we heal. Oh. I mean, you have your own, like, method, but yeah. you didn't, we're like, oh, here's my program. No. 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 <laughs> you come here. Yeah. Every time you come, it's a, diff it's a different uh, experience, mm -hmm. right? And so I don't do that. Like, you know, every time you come here, oh, you know, um, you say you have a shoulder, right? Or you have a hips, you know, you know like those, those things that have uh, when you come here. And I, 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 don't, I don't even mention you have this kind of label, you know, you have an impinged nerve, you know, in medical term, you know, which is true. But I don't look at that way, you know, I will look at the whole thing and with the energy work. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to explain, but I'm trying to get out there, everything that I want to, like, I cannot, that's why I told you, I cannot explain what I do, like, I cannot explain. <laughs> you help people move from victimhood to empowerment. So when we play victim, we say, Oh, you know, this happened to me, and you got to fix me, and it's your job, and, and oh, poor me, I'm struggling over here, right? Yeah. But it's like moving from that to empowerment is to be it's being empowered to, I'm going to do this homework, I'm going to heal myself, oh, let me learn about, oh, this condition is reversible. So yeah. moving from that place of like, woe is me, and life is hard, and my body hurts, <laughs> and you know, just like that complaining yeah. to a place of empowerment of like, Oh, I could do these yoga that Milo's teaching me, or I could do all these other things. You know, learning about your body and actively taking responsibility instead of playing victim and yeah. sitting back and getting pills and being like, oh, mm -hmm. it'll be fine. Yeah. Whatever. I guess I guess we'll just live with this for the rest of my life. That kind of attitude to being so empowered that you're like, oh, like like you say, you find seekers, and so people that are more progressively more empowered to make the choices and decisions to get out of that victim. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you explain it well. You <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could be in a position because I don't know what to say. Like, I'd rather work on you and then, and then it will come out, the result. I am uprooting the physical trauma, mental trauma, emotional trauma from a young age up to today. If you're 50 years old, 60 years old, that's a lot of work. To work, you can't just one day you come to me and you fix. It's a process. Like she's been with me for a long time, and then her journey. Look at the orange. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> I remember starting to show up to you, and I would be like bright colors, like oh, look at you. <laughs> it brought my day. You know. Yeah, it's the willingness to take the journey, yeah. though. It's like the willingness to to go for it and to trust, right? Yeah. And to trust you yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. all of your experience, because you went through the psych field, you know the 
the Western med medicinal approach through like being a nurse, you've seen all of it. Yeah. So you, you've seen that world and you've seen yeah. the pain that people go through and now you're in a place where you can really help people. Mm -hmm. So I just want to support that. <laughs> <laughs> you're the best. Thank you. Of course.